welcome to python lecture everyone and in this lecture we are going to discuss about a uh, user input most of the time whenever you will try to write a program you have to take a input from a user you must have experienced the same thing on a different different website where people ask you to enter your name email id or m many things right so how we will be able to achieve the exact same thing with the help of python this is what we are going to understand in this particular lecture so there is a very basic and simple function given inside a python which is called as input function which is a inbuilt function and with the help of this we can ask an user to enter some sort of a data let's try to understand let's suppose if i have to take a input as a name so maybe we can write a input function and then we can say that uh, enter your name right we can try to ask a user so as you can see it is asking me to enter my name so here i'm going to enter sudanshu that's completely fine now if i would like to check that what is the input user has given so input is this one so it is trying to store this entire input into this name variable and i will be able to use this particular name variable now if i'm going to check what is the type of this name so type of this particular name if i have to check so type of this particular name is nothing but it's a string now by default this input function gives you output as a string doesn't matter what you are going to input for example instead of writing a name maybe in a alphabetical character so i can try to enter some sort of a numeric value enter that's completely fine and then if i'm going to see this is nothing but it's a integer but it is trying to wrap it up inside a single quotes which simply means that that data type is a string if i'm going to check a type it is going to be the string but my use case is different let's suppose i have to enter maybe a integer so how i will be able to enter an integer because by default it is trying to take a string and i don't want a string i simply want an integer so if i have to input a age for example so let's suppose if i have to enter age i can write input over here maybe i can ask a user that enter your age right enter your age so yes i n p u t okay fine so enter your age let's suppose if user has entered 34 now if i'm going to check age so age is 34 if i am going to check what is the type of this age so type of this age is going to be string by default because this is the nature of input function but i don't want this input as a string what i want is i want this to be available in a integer format so to convert this entire input in a integer i can try to do a type casting so int is a inbuilt function again available inside a python which will be able to perform a type casting whatever numeric value you are going to enter not alpha not alpha numeric but just a numeric value so for example now if i am going to enter my age is equal to 30 if i am going to check what is the age now it is not wrapping it up inside a single quotes if i am going to check what is the type so type is equals to int and this is possible because of this particular type casting so whatever entry i am going to make it is able to convert it into an integer again i am going to execute it and let's suppose this time it is asking me for my age but i am going to give some sort of a alphabetic character over here right enter it is giving me error why it is giving me error because i have entered this one and it will not be able to do a type casting for this particular string it will not be able to convert it into an integer and because of that i am receiving a value error so whenever you are doing a type casting you have to make sure all the time that you are going to enter an integer at the same point of a time let's suppose instead of integer i am going to enter maybe a floating point number now what will happen so let's suppose i have just given a input is equals to floating point number again it is giving me an error is telling me that okay i'm really very really sorry i will not be able to convert this one into this one so if i'm giving int i have to make sure that all the time all the time user is going to enter input as an integer but let's suppose there is a situation where we have to enter a floating point number because this is not allowing me 
So if I have to enter a floating point number, for example, someone has asked me that what is your height? Let's suppose that is 174.56. That is a height. Let, let's, for example. So if user is trying to enter with this one, it will not allow. It will give an error because we are trying to do a type casting for an integer. So to do that, maybe I can write a different line of a code. H E I G S T height is equals to, and then I can ask for the input. Enter your height. Execute. Now, let's suppose if I'm going to enter floating point number, it will work fine. But at the end of the day, it is converting everything into a string. Again, I can perform a type casting operation over here. So I can just try to write in this particular place in a beginning itself, F-L-O-A-T. So float, right? So by default, it will try to perform a type casting operation. It will convert everything into a floating point number. And now if I'm going to check what is the height, so height is this one. If I'm going to check what is the type of this height, T-Y-P-E, type of this particular height, height. So it is giving me a floating point number. So if I have to take some input in a floating point number, I have to type I have to convert it into a float. If I have to take something in a int format, integer format, so I have to typecast it with the integer. If I'm not giving anything in that situation, it will try to take it as a string by default. Okay. So all of these things we are able to understand. But let's suppose, let's suppose we have to enter a data, but a multiple data at a time, not just one. Multiple data I have to enter at a time. For example, Let's suppose I'm going to create a detail variable, detail variable. And here I'm writing an input function. And here I'm asking user that enter your name, age, height, phone number, and then email ID. So I'm just asking a user to enter a multiple things, not just one. Let's execute it. So if I'm going to execute, enter your name, S-U-D-H-N-S-H-U, then I can create a separator over here, age is equals to 30, height is equals to 174.45 let's suppose and then I'm going to enter maybe a phone number over here and then I'm going to enter maybe a email id sskumar9876 at the rate gmail.com. So yes, it will be able to take all the input. I can try to print each and everything but the problem is it is available in a string format, a single string format and here so it has considered all the data set as a single string. That is a problem. I don't want this to be done by my program. I just want my program to separate each and everything and give each and every entity in a separate separate data point or maybe in something so where I will be able to access a data separately. I will be able to access my name separately, age, height, phone number and email ID all of these things in a separate separate way. So what I can do is I can call a simple function called as a split function. Again this function is an inbuilt function. It will try to split your data set based on the delimiter or based on the separator. For example, let's suppose I'm trying to enter all the details with a separator called as comma. Right, And I would like to separate all of these data one by one, one by one, one by one based on the comma delimiter. So I can try to mention over here that, okay, try to separate my data based on comma. If I'm giving a space, then I can try to mention a space over here. If I'm giving any other delimiter, I can try to mention those delimiter inside my split function. Now let's try to re-execute once again. So this is my name, let's suppose. This is my age. This is my height, 174.45. For example, my phone number, I can try to enter over here. My email ID, I can try to enter over here. Fine. Now, if I'm going to check this variable. So what has happened? So it is returning each and everything in a separate separate way as a part of the list. So because of this particular split function, it is converting everything into a list by separating a data with the help of delimiter comma. If I'm going to give entry 
with the help of delimiter called as space or maybe tab or maybe something else, I can mention it over here. And yes, it will be able to split a data. It will be able to separate a data. Now out of this data, if I would like to access my name, so I know that that my name is available at 0th position. Let's always try to store a data by giving a particular indexes. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So here, if someone is asking me that access just a name, yes, I will be able to access it. If someone is asking me that access email ID, yes, I will be able to access email ID separately. So this is how I will be able to take a multiple entries. Now, if someone has asked me a question that, okay, you are able to take a multiple entries, that's completely fine. But you have to take these multiple entries in a different, different variable, not in just single variable. Because as of now, it is keeping everything inside a single variable in a form of collection called as list. But I don't want that. What I want is, I want to keep all of these data into a separate, separate variable. For example, name into a name variable, age into a age variable, height into a height variable, phone number into phone number variable, email ID into email ID variable. So how I will be able to perform that operation? Let's try to understand. So it's the same code, same piece of a code you have to utilize. And here, so you can try to give a variable name, name comma, age comma, height, comma, phone, number, comma, email, email is equals to. So here, what I have done is, so I have just created a multiple variable as you can see, right? I have created a multiple variable and we know that, that this is going to return me what? This is going to return me a list. This is going to return me a list. So I'm just trying to do a mapping that, okay, fine. So list Zero item will go over here. First item will go over here. Second item will go over here. Third item will go over here. And fourth item will go over here. So in this way, I'm just trying to do a mapping over here. Now execute SUDHNSHU, which is my name. And then age is, let's suppose, 30. Height is 174.30. And then maybe a phone number 91. Some data I'm going to mention over here. And then SSKumar9876 at the rate gmail.com is my email ID. So I have entered all all of these data and we know what is the output of this one yes now let's try to check name so yes name is Sudhanshu it is able to print my name now let's suppose if I'm going to print age if I'm going to print age so age is 30 so whatever data which I have entered it is trying to perform one-to-one -one mapping to all of this data and it is able to showcase maybe I can write a print over here and I can check one by one so what is the value of this name variable, then print, what is the value of this age variable, and then maybe a print, what is the value of this height variable, then maybe a print, what is the value of this phone number variable, then print, what is the value of this email, and execute. As you can see, it is able to capture a separate, separate data for me in a different different variable so in this way you will be able to take a multiple input and you will be able to assign those respective input to a different different variable okay that's done now let's suppose there is a situation yes there is a situation so where i have to enter a password you must have seen that whenever you try to enter a password it will not be visible to anyone as long as you are not going to click on show password option so if I have to enter such kind of a data where I don't have to showcase the entry, right? Whenever we are going to enter something, it should showcase me dot, dot, dot or static, 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 this kind of a fashion. So how I will be able to take such kind of a input? To do that, there is a package called as get pass. So from get pass, what I can do is I can try to import get pass. And here I can try to use get pass function and I can try to write enter your PAWSWORD, PAWS password. Enter your password. Now let's execute. Now here, whatever I'm going to enter, you can see that, that it's not showing you the data set. Yes, 
this data set is not visible to any one of you hit enter so this is a data which i have entered but while entering this data it was not visible to anyone very simple right so this way you will be able to write a program so which will be able to take password as a entry okay now let's suppose there is another situation so where i'm going to ask a user to input something maybe input a name but let's suppose user has not entered a name for example let's suppose there is a input and i'm asking user that enter your name okay now let's suppose user has entered something it will be able to showcase maybe there is a situation so where user has not entered anything so in that case this string is going to be blank yes this is going to be blank but i don't want to feed this data into my databases as a blank or as a null i want some default values means if user has not entered anything it should enter some default value so how i will be able to achieve that again very simple so here i can write or operator so or i have written and i can mention no name execute let's suppose if user has not entered anything it will by default try to take entry as no name or whatever you are going to write in this particular place if user is going to enter a name it's completely fine if user is not going to enter a name in that case it will try to showcase no name which is a default one so likewise you will be able to see a multiple permutation combination of this input function but yes by default like i said input always try to take a string if you have to do a type casting yes you can do it into a different different format as per your need and you will be able to take a multiple input you will be able to take a default input you will be able to take even a hidden input this is what we have discussed in this entire lecture with that thank you so much see you again in a next lecture